Hey, I'm Jake. I make RPG supplements and videos about Pathfinder 2, or PF2. That's how to pronounce it. It's PF2. That, that's how it goes. I'm coming back with another archetype. It's another time one, because, like, Time Mage seemed to be missing its mate. So, Chrono Skimmer is what we're going over today, which you already know because you clicked on the thumbnail. So, Chrono Skimmer, archetype. The flow of time is an unstoppable force. Most are carried downstream inexorably, like a leaf floating on a river. You, however, somehow fell out of the flow of time, if only for an instant, but in doing so gained a perspective that few others have. I have to read this way because it's in Dark Archive. That's what you gotta do. Now you stand on the banks of the river, watching the flow, choosing where to dive in or even defying the current, at least for a short while, as you skim its surface and skip from moment to moment. As a chrono skimmer, time is yours to exploit. Get off of my mouse! Kitty. You have the means to see the timelines of all creatures, including your own. You can use this insight to manipulate the flow of time for creatures, much like you can pluck the leaf from the river in, and place it elsewhere. Manipulating timelines can be dangerous, however, and the dimension of time isn't wont to allow these transgressions against time to stand forever. The threat always looms of time dimensionals coming to correct your actions or of you becoming removed from time forever, ever, ever. I love this book. It's so over the top. Hounds of Tindalos are no joke. Those things are... They're Lovecraftian, but they're like hounds of time, and they are creatures that will horribly wreck your day. They have a reaving aura. I'm just saying that time creatures can actually mess with people who use time magic, and it's fun to throw them at people because they're like, what the fuck is that thing? I don't know. It's made of like tentacles and teeth. You've never seen it before. Why is my flesh coming apart? Oh, it's a reaving aura. It, like, does slashing damage because it can see you. <laughs> Chrono Skimmer Dedication, Feet 2. You became partially unstuck from time and have learned how to manipulate your place in flow of time. When you roll initiative, you can choose one of three options. Either do nothing and roll initiative normally, stabilize your time stream, or destabilize your time stream and send it into intense fluctuations. If you choose to stabilize your time stream, you don't roll initiative, and instead your initiative is equal to 10 plus your initiative modifier. If you choose to destabilize your time stream, attempt a DC 11 flat check. On a success, your initiative is equal to 19 plus your initiative modifier. And on a failure, your initiative is equal to 1 plus your initiative modifier. <laughs> Both stabilizing and destabilizing your time stream are fortune effects. Additionally, if your initiative roll result is tied with an opponent's initiative roll, you go first. Your manipulation of time grants you access to a number of abilities, some of which require a saving throw. The DC for these abilities is either your class DC or spell DC, whichever is higher, and is called your Chrono Skimmer DC. I want to pause here for a moment. Like, the first several feats are fortune effects. As fortune effects, this archetype could fit a lot of different characters because it's, it's, yes, it's flavored like time manipulation, but it could just be, I'm a fucking lucky halfling. And so I happened to go first. I just was looking in the right direction when the monster came around the corner and I was ready to act. So keep that in mind when I'm, when I'm reading this stuff and commenting on it. They can fit a bunch of different characters. Next feat, level 4, Turn Back the Clock, Reaction. It has the traits Concentrate and Fortune. Prerequisites, Chrono Skimmer Dedication, obviously, Frequency once per day, Trigger, you fail a skill check or saving throw. After failing a test of skill, you hop back in your personal timeline so you can try it again. You reroll the triggering check with a plus one circumstance bonus as you apply your experience from your last attempt. You must use the new result, even if it's worse than your first roll. Pretty simple. You get to try something again. See? It's luck. Next feat, level 6, Guide the Timeline, has the Concentrate trait. Frequency once per day. You, It's one action. You know the result you want and subtly nudge the timeline to your intended destination. Choose an ally or a foe. If you choose an ally, the next time within the next round that ally makes an attack roll or skill check, they roll it twice and take the higher result. This is a fortune effect. 
If you choose a foe, the next time within the next round, that foe makes an attack roll or a skill check. They must roll twice and take the lower result unless they succeed at a will save against your Chrono Skimmer DC. This is a misfortune effect. Regardless of your choice, the target becomes temporarily immune for 24 hours. This is... Uh, give... Oh my god, what the fuck is the name of the damn thing? Oh god, I just thought of it and left my head because I don't like the system. Oh. Guide the timeline is just... You can rewrite it as give disadvantage or give advantage. It's a useful feat if you're not really much of a combatant. Because you're just fucking with people on the battlefield and helping your allies. Or even if you are a combatant, because it's one action. Next feat, level 8, reversing charge, two actions. You dive into the fray before rewinding yourself to safety. I love the flavor of this. Stride up to your speed. If you end your movement within melee reach of at least one enemy, you can make a melee strike against that enemy. You then teleport back to the square from which you began your snapback charge, which apparently was the original name of this thing, so it's reversing charge. You can use reversing charge while burrowing, climbing, flying, or swimming instead of striding if you have the corresponding movement type. This one doesn't really, really fit luck, but others do too. So this one is its definitely a, a time thing. I have no idea how you can BS it as something else. But it's a very nice ability if your AC is shit. Like if, for example, like Red Devil does on our channel, you like playing melee witches. Well, witches have shit AC. So this lets you charge in, claw a bitch, and run away. Next feat, level 8, superimposed time duplicates. One action. Frequency once per hour. You call alternate versions of yourself, either from a different timeline or perhaps yourself from a different point in your current timeline, to aid you in combat. So far, it's much like the Time Mage's ability to pull different versions of themselves. But this is cooler. Until the start of your next turn, these alternate selves flicker in and out in your vicinity, providing flanking for you against all enemies within your reach. Flanking with your time duplicates is the same as flanking with an ally, and so is subject to effects like all-around vision or the denying advantage class feature. That's it. It's just for flanking. I think you should also do the mirror image effect, because it's fucking 8th level. One. Okay, yeah. It is useful anyway. One action to provide flanking. Alright. It's gotta be the right build. Somewhere where you need flanking and you have an extra action, but it's okay. I think you should also be mirror images. Next feat, level 10, borrow time. Free action. Frequency once per minute. Trigger your turn begins. You reach ahead and make use of time that's yet to be. You become quickened and cause... You become quickened and can use the extra action to step, stride, or strike. You gain this extra action immediately and can use it this turn. At the end of your turn, you become stunned one. Meaning you lose your next action. I still love it. It's not at the beginning of initiative, it's the beginning of your turn. So you don't have to do it like when a fight first breaks out, you do it when you take your action. And once per minute means it's useful in every fight. This is very handy because everyone could use an extra action sometimes, and you don't always have haste on you, especially the first round of combat. So this is really useful, especially that first round of combat. It's just an all-around all great feat. Like, anybody could take this. Next feat, level 10, Steal Time. Two actions. Frequency once per hour. You reach into another creature's timeline and attempt to alter their flow of time. Select a creature within 30 feet. That creature attempts a fortitude saving throw against your Chrono Skimmer DC. The creature takes the effects of slow based on the result of its saving throw. Very fancy way to make somebody slow. I wish this did something different. I mean, it's... Yes, it's a useful effect. Slow is a useful ability. This is a 10th level feat in a rare archetype that you really can't justify most of the time. That needs to be... That needs to do something different. Anyway, slow is useful. Fine. Next feat, level 12, Combat Premonition. By narrowing your sense of the future, you can improve that of your allies. When you roll initiative, instead of stabilizing or destabilizing your own time stream, you can grant your allies a flash of insight into their future. Choose two allies. The, those allies roll their initiative roll twice and take the better result. This is a fortune effect. You roll your initiative roll twice and take the worst result. This is a misfortune effect. The two effects are tied together. If you would avoid the misfortune effect for any reason, or if any of your allies would negate their fortune effect, your combat premonition does nothing. 
It's again luck. It works for a lot of different build themes. In fact, this should probably be available to any archetype or build that uses luck. I can't really think of any other archetype that uses luck. I don't know, Curse Maelstrom, maybe? That'd be kind of fun. It would turn Curse Maelstrom, the archetype, into like a luck slash bad luck archetype. You mess with a lot of fortunes. That's neat. I like that idea. Next feat, level 12, Escape Timeline. Free action, frequency once per day, trigger your turn begins. You step outside of the flow of time momentarily, allowing you to avoid dangers. Your physical form stops existing momentarily, and you can't be targeted or affected until the start of your next turn. You simply don't exist at that moment in time. This is really similar to the Time Mage. The Stasis ability. I love that domain spell. Your turn ends immediately, advancing one round for all timed durations and effects such as conditions and afflictions. You still attempt saving throws, flat checks, or any other checks at the end of your turn as normal, but you don't take any damage due to these checks, though you take any non-damaging effects as normal. At the start of your next turn, you re-enter the flow of time and reappear in the same space where you left time last round. If the space isn't clear, you arrive in the nearest open space. This could save your life. That's about all it can do because you can't target another ally with it, it's not a reaction, and it has to be done at the beginning of your turn. Still, I just said it could save your life. That could be amazingly useful, unless you just like making new characters like some people I know. Next feat, level 12, space-time shift. It's a free action frequency once per 10 minutes, trigger your turn begins. You travel just a few moments into the future to immediately arrive at your destination. Your strides are augmented until the end of your turn, allowing you to instantly teleport to any point you could reach with your stride instead of traversing normally to the location. Your augmented strides have the teleport trait, trait and don't trigger reactions that can be triggered by move actions or upon leaving or entering a square. You also augment your burrow, climb, fly, or swim actions in this way if you have the corresponding movement type. Obviously, you can use it to avoid difficult terrain. That's, that's useful. But something it doesn't mention here is that if your enemy is facing you and you w were trying to move around or behind them or teleport, I'm, I mean, or like get into a hiding place, they just see you disappear. They don't know where the fuck you went. So they, I would think, would have to spend a seek action to find you again, especially if you're hiding. This could be quite useful. Even if it's not, like, quite useful, it's funny. <laughs> no, there will be times that this is useful for anyone. So this is a great feat. Last feat, level 14, reset the past. Free action, frequency once per day, you manipulate time to recharge one of your temporal techniques. By revising your past so you never used it in the first place, select one of your Chrono Skimmer feats that has a frequency of once per day or more frequent that you've already used. You can use the feat again as if you hadn't used it already. I think this should also go for Time Mage. Anything in either of those archetypes that is once per day or once per hour, some sort of limitation like that, you can do it again. Well, it, it says or more frequent, so once per day, once per hour, once per 10 minutes, once per minute, whatever. That's a neat fucking ability. Even if it's just for the Chrono Skimmer. Because there are a lot of these abilities that sometimes you might want to use them twice. It seems like this is an archetype that mechanically could support any build. Not all of the mechanics fit thematically with every build. But like I said, it can work with time or fate, fortune, Chaos, luck, curses, the harrower. I think this could work for harrower really well, because that's all about fate as well. Yeah, this could work well. I, I like that. The combination of the two. Thank you for your ocular organs today. And if you're a patron, thank you for taking care of the channel and me and loot. He's falling asleep, but, you know, it's just because he's content that he's cared for. If you want to see a playlist of more archetypes, it's over here. If you want to see the most recent book I covered, that would be Howl of the Wild. There's a playlist here. There's 21 videos in it. I almost said, hi, I'm Loot. <laughs> What's my line? <laughs>